for that beautiful music. It was gorgeous. Good morning. And bless you for being here on this cold, snowy morning. Well done, everyone. Happy Reformation Sunday to each and every one of you. It's a special day of celebration and of reflection for the Lutheran Church. We've had a wonderful uh, service planned with all the musicians and the singers. We have confirmation. The kids get to confess their faith, affirm their faith, and we're excited about that. We have new members today, so it's a great day to be here. Just a couple of announcements. Following this is lunch downstairs. Feel free to join us. You don't want to go home in the cold. There's going to be burritos. And then following that is the trunk or treat is inside. There's candy, so you can go around and trick or treat. Even if you're not a kid in a costume, we'll still give you candy. And we'd love for you to join us downstairs. Next week, is the chili cook-off. You can see that announcement in your bulletin. And then in two weeks, uh, our friends, my husband and my friend, Michael and Carmen Zobi from Bethlehem will be here to speak during the adult forum. They are Palestinian Christians and uh, they have been coming over for decades. And uh, this is the first time they'll be in Augustana. So I'm delighted to have them here for you to meet them, them to meet you. And then you get to hear their story of living in the Holy Land, especially and this time. So, and that's in two weeks. I invite you to stand and greet one another. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. And walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Gracious God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in need, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by His blood, effective through faith, he did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. 
It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and could I have the children meet me at the baptismal font, please? Hold these, please, so I don't knock them over. Thank you. Good. What's another word we call it? Um, it's a bowl. It's a bowl. It is. Do you know what that bowl holds? A baby. A baby. <laughs> what else does it hold? Water. Should we pour some water in here? Here. Did you... Did you know we have teenagers today affirming their faith, their baptismal promises that their parents made? And um, I was thinking about that today, that, you know, as you get older, you'll be able to do that as well, too. When babies are born like this size, they have to be fed, right? They can't feed themselves yet. And when they get a little bit older, they learn how to pick up food. Parents are still putting the food on the high chair or wherever, and they're starting to feed themselves. Now your age, you feed yourself, don't you? Do you have a full? And your age too, yes. You're four, and then you'll be five next. And I bet you can pick up a fork or spoon, put food in your mouth. Can you do that? And so as we get older, we learn to do more and more for ourselves, right? You're learning to do more and more for yourselves. And the same with your faith. You'll learn more about your faith like these teenagers have done, that they're learning more and more. 
just because they're being confirmed today, does that mean they're done with church? Right answer, no. Adults, are you finished with church? No. Are you still learning more? And they still, we come together and we sing and we pray and we praise and we serve other people and that's what this is for. And so one of the things that we do, uh, well, your parents promised to bring you to church. This congregation promised to support you in your faith, which is so very important. So one of the things we like to do sometimes with the baptismal water is we'll take, can I touch your forehead? You're a beloved child of God. And we remember that with our baptismal waters that we can do that. So how about we do that? Would you like me to do it for each of you or would you like to do it for each other today? You don't care? Each other? Okay, and I've got a stool for those who can't reach the water. So we'll just line up. Okay, here you come. And I just did you. So you put your finger in there and cross him and say, God loves you. Can he touch your forehead? God loves you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good job. All right, you want to do the next person? You want to cross him? Cross his forehead. You have to squat down. There you go. God loves you. Good job. Thank you. All right, you want to do the next person? Okay. Say the words. God loves you. Good. All right. And you come up here and he'll do you, okay? Oh, let him do you first and then you'll do the next person, okay? Good job. Oh, huh. All right, who's next? You wanna come up and let him do you? Okay. And you wanna cross her forehead? Put a cross on her forehead? So you put your finger in here and then you do the cross like that. Good job. All right, next. You want to put your finger in there? Come up. Wonderful. Okay, come on. Wonderful. You want to do the next one? Here. You want to put your finger in the water? Can you reach? There you go. Oh, stretch. Good job. All right. God loves you. All right, who hasn't done it yet? Is everybody? Oh, come here. All right, went to her. God loves you. All right, who's next? Anybody? Have you done it yet? Do you want to? No? Anybody else? All right, will you do me? Put it on me, please. Thank you. And all God's children say, Amen. Thank you so much, boys and girls, for coming up here today. Are you, yes. Because what? Wonderful. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This past month, Deacon Shanna had asked the congregation to donate painted pictures that we no longer display at home. And these, these are being used by the youth to make ghost pictures. I don't know what that is, but I look forward to seeing them. Well, I told Deacon Shanna that I had a painting that had been gifted to us. And honestly, I never hung it up, never used it. It didn't look all that great. You know, and so I thought, well, I'll make good use of it and give it to the youth group. Well, um, took it out of the frame, which was also gifted to us, and laid it on the counter. And my daughter was here, youngest daughter was here. And she, like three or four times, walked past it and said, Mom, this painting is beautiful. 
really? Okay. So I slowed down and went and looked at it and realized it was. It had very vibrant colors. Excuse me. So we realized that the frame had been detracting from it. It didn't highlight the colors or the style or the beauty of this artwork. And it's, well, now that picture is now in a new frame that highlights the color style and beauty and it's hanging up in our house. Sorry, Shanna, it's, the youth aren't getting it. But like that painting, sometimes we need to reframe our thinking, our faith and our lives to highlight the beauty and the possibilities of God's love in us and our love for others. In today's gospel lesson, we read that the religious leaders had challenged Jesus once again and asked which commandment he considered the greatest. And Jesus answered, we all know this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Another gospel says, with all your strength. This is the greatest and the first. The second is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. After such a challenge by the religious leaders, Jesus would go on often to tell a parable, framing his teaching in a story. Today I want to share with you a story that depicts God's teaching, Jesus' teaching on love. This story is by Tony Campola. Anybody have heard of, read Tony Campola? Read his stuff? Yeah. He is an American sociologist, a professor, an author, and a public speaker. He's, a, he's Professor Emeritus at Eastern University in Philadelphia and a former faculty member at the University of Pennsylvania. And he's a pastor preacher. He tells great stories. So here's the one I want to share with you. If you live on the East Coast, and travel to Hawaii, you know that there is a time difference that makes three o'clock in the morning feel like nine o'clock. With that in mind, you will understand that whenever I go to our 50th state, I find myself wide awake long before dawn. Not only do I find myself up and ready to go while almost everybody else is still asleep, but I find that I want breakfast when almost everything on the island is still closed which is why I was up and wandering up and down the streets of Honolulu at 3.30 in the morning, looking for a place for something to eat. Up a side street, I found a little place that was still open. I went in, took a seat on one of the stools at the counter and waited to be served. This was one of those sleazy places that deserves the name Greasy Spoon. I mean, I did not even touch the menu. I was afraid that if I opened the thing, something gruesome would crawl out, but it was the only place that I could find to eat. So then this large guy behind the counter came over and asked me, what do you want? I told him a cup of coffee and a donut, please. He poured a cup of coffee, wiped his grimy hand on a smudged apron, then grabbed a donut off the shelf behind him. Now I'm a realist. I know that in the back room of that restaurant, donuts are probably dropped on the floor and kicked around. But when everything is out front where I could see it, I really would have appreciated it if he had used a pair of tongs and placed the donut on some wax paper. As I sat there munching on my donut and sipping my coffee at 3.30 in the morning, the door of the diner suddenly swung open and to my discomfort, in marched eight or nine provocative and boisterous prostitutes. It was a small place and they sat on either side of me. Their talk was loud and crude. I felt completely out of place and was just about to make my getaway when I overheard the woman sitting beside me say, tomorrow's my birthday, I'm going to be 39. Her friend, responded in a nasty tone. So what do you want from me? A birthday party? What do you want? You want me to get you a cake and sing happy birthday? Come on, said the woman next to me. Why do you have to be so mean? I was just telling you that's all. Why do you have to put me down? I was just telling you it was my birthday. I don't want anything from you. 
I mean, why should you give me a birthday party? I've never had a birthday party my whole life. Why should I have one now? Well, when I heard that, I made a decision. I sat and waited until the woman had left. Then I called over the large guy behind the counter and I asked him, do they come in here every night? He answered, yeah. The one right next to me, does she come here every night? Yeah, he said, that's Agnes. Yeah, she comes here every night. Why do you wanna know? Well, because I heard her say that tomorrow is her birthday. What do you think about us throwing a birthday party for her right here tomorrow night? A smile slowly crossed his chubby face and he answered with measured delight. That's great, I like it, that's a great idea. Calling to his wife, who did the cooking in the back room, he shouted, hey, come out here. This guy's got a great idea. Tomorrow is Agnes's birthday. This guy wants us to go in with him and throw a birthday party for her right here tomorrow night. His wife came out of the back room all bright and smiley. She said, that's wonderful. You know, Agnes is one of those people who is really nice and kind and well, nobody ever does anything nice and kind for her. Look, I told them, it's, if it's okay with you, I'll be back here tomorrow morning about 2.30 and decorate the place. I'll even get a birthday cake. No way, said Harry, that was his name. The birthday cake's my thing, I'll make that cake. So at 2.30 the next morning, I was back at the diner. I had picked up some crepe paper decorations at the store and had made a sign out of big pieces of cardboard that read, Happy Birthday, Agnes. I decorated that diner from one end to the other and I had it looking pretty good. The woman who did the cooking must have gotten the word out on the street because by 3.15, Every prostitute in Honolulu was in the place. It was wall-to-wall -wall prostitutes and me. At 3.30 on the dot, the door of the diner swung open and in came Agnes and her friend. I had everybody ready. After all, I was kind of the MC of the affair. And when they came in, we all screamed, happy birthday. Never have I seen a person so flabbergasted, so stunned, so shaken. Her mouth fell open. Her legs seemed to buckle a bit, a bit. Her friend grabbed her arm to steady her. As she was led to one of the stools along the counter, we all sang happy birthday to her. And as we came to the end of our singing, happy birthday, dear Agnes, happy birthday to you. Her eyes moistened. Then when the birthday cake with all the candles lit on it was carried out, she lost it and just openly cried. Harry gruffly mumbled, blow out the candles, Agnes. Come on, blow out the candles. If you don't blow out the candles, I'm gonna have to blow out the candles. And after an endless few seconds, he did. Then he handed her a knife and told her, cut the cake, Agnes. Yo, Agnes, we all want some cake. Agnes looked down at the cake. Then without taking her eyes off it, she slowly and softly said, look, Harry, is it all, is it all right with you if I, I mean, is it okay if I kind of, what I want to ask you is, is, is it okay if I keep the cake a little while? I mean, is it all right if we don't eat it right away? Harry shrugged and answered, sure, it's okay. If you want to keep the cake, keep the cake. Take it home if you want to. Can I, she asked. Then looking at me, she said, I live just down the street a couple of doors. I want to take the cake home and show it to my mother, okay? I'll be right back, honest. She got off the stool, picked up the cake, and carrying it like it was the holy grail, walked slowly toward the door. As we all stood there motionless, she left. When the door closed, there was a stunned silence in that place. Not knowing what else to do, I broke the silence by saying, 
What do you say we pray? Looking back on it now, it seems more than strange for a sociologist to be leading a prayer meeting with a bunch of prostitutes in a diner in Honolulu at 3.30 in the morning. But it just felt like the right thing to do. I prayed for Agnes. I prayed for her salvation. I prayed that her life would be changed and that God would be good to her. When I finished, Harry leaned over the counter and said, hey, you never told me you were a preacher. What kind of church do you belong to? And one of those moments when just the right words came, I answered, I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. Harry waited a moment then answered, no, you don't. There's no church like that. If there was, I'd join it. I'd join a church like that. This, this is what love looks like in our church and in our lives. This is what it means to be framed by love. We sometimes hold each other at arm's length, but those framed by love throw parties for them. Rather than run from the prostitutes or anyone else with condemnation, Jesus turned towards them with the love of God. Loving God with every ounce of our being, our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength, and loving others as ourself. That is how we are to live and to be and how we are to measure God's will for our lives and for the church life. And when we fail, because we will and we do, know that God loves us first and foremost and without hesitation. That alone gives us the strength and the courage to keep going and loving again and again, over and over. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. seated. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. 
I present these people who do desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Robert Brown. Caroline Hope Johnson. James Warren Cusick. Sonia Catherine Massey. Maya J. Stone. Allison Terry. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself. Enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, answer by saying, I think actually we have them individually answer. Each, each of you will say, I do and I ask God to help and guide me. Go ahead. People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them and their life in Christ? If so, answer we. Oh, oh let's do that again. Do you promise? Thank you. We invite the confirmands to kneel and for their families and friends to come around them. touch their shoulders and then as you can't touch each other's shoulders there you go so you can touch awesome. their shoulders or you can if you can't quite reach you can touch each other's shoulders so touch somebody in front of you <laughs> yeah let us pray we give you thanks O god that through water and the holy spirit you give us new birth cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life Stir up in Robert the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, 
the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Sonia the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Stir up in Carolyn the gift of your spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Maya the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Jack the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Allison the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. We now have a gift from the choir for you. We ask the young people to kind of move their way through their friends and family because we would like um, to celebrate with you. And I'm going to invite those of us in the pews and in the choir to share a moment of celebration and simply clap with them. You'll have an opportunity after worship today to greet them at the back of the sanctuary in the narthex in the entrance. And uh, we'll hope that you do that and give them another word of welcome into the, uh, again, into the body of Christ as they are so named children of God. And I invite you all back to your seats. You're invited to stand as we continue with our prayers. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gracious God, you alone deserve our worship and praise. We thank you for the opportunities you provide for us to hear your word and bring people into our lives that, that give voice to the promises of Christ. Help us look unto you and not to ourselves as sources of grace, as the source of grace and strength to live each day. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of peace and justice, our hearts, 
are sad to see the great suffering of your children in the world. We pray for peace for the people of Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, and all other places affected by conflict and violence. Inspire our world leaders in their efforts towards international cooperation, fairness, and truth. God of grace. God of all creation, you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Help us find the will and wisdom to take care of our earth. We pray for those areas suffering extreme weather, for those dealing with ongoing drought in Brazil, and those in the pathways of tropical cyclones moving towards Bangladesh, Yemen, Yemen, Nicaragua, and Mexico. God of grace. God of healing, we ask you to bring strength and healing to all who suffer. We pray for those who struggle with physical illnesses, mental illnesses, addictions, and those facing social and financial crises. We pray, we especially pray for Michael, Kevin, Aaron, Ron, Don, Sam, Bill, Marguerite, and those whom we name quietly. God of grace. God of comfort, we pray for renewed hope and comfort of all who mourn the death of their loved ones. We especially pray for the family and friends of Janice Bassford, Dog Boyd, Doris Scanion, and those whom we name quietly. God of grace. Receive these prayers, gracious God, and those prayers, those prayers known only to you. We ask this in the name of, our, of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. As the Confirmation Youth had classes over the last several weeks with the pastors, so did our new members, and we would like to take a moment and welcome them formally to the congregation. I know that we are missing um, some of them today with the weather and the roads, um, and also George and Rachel Haas were welcomed this morning at 8 o'clock, so um, that was fun for our 8 o'clock worship service. And I'll name our new members, and they're in the bulletin in your um, handout, and I just invite you to come forward. Sherry Cloutier, Susan Patterson, Michael Quintana, Janice Schultz, Mary Tinker, and Jim and Jeanette Viduna. Come on forward. We have one you, brave soul You will represent our, <laughs> our new members. No pressure. <laughs> Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of God's love and for this sister in Christ and our brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ who are not with us today, who are becoming part of our Augustana community. We rejoice with you and with them and we look forward to worshiping, learning, serving, and growing in faith together. You have made a public profession of your faith. Do you intend, you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, answer by saying, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Amen. People of God, do you promise to welcome, encourage, and pray for this sister and for those siblings who aren't here today? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for the gift of baptism and your call to become part of the body of Christ. Nourish us in faith and open our hearts and minds to one another and to the world. Bless our congregation and these new members. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank I you so much. I invite you to stand. 
Hold on just one second. We're going to welcome you in peace. <laughs> invite you to stand. And take a look in your bulletin and also make sure to, to greet people over the next few weeks. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with those around you.
Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God. Blessed is your Son, Jesus, our host at this table. Blessed is your Spirit, who settles in us and among us, and within these gifts of bread and cup, transforming them, making them sacred, and filling not our bodies but our souls. So with gratitude and praise we come to your table, ready to be filled, ready to be sent out, ready to be your people in the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We lift our prayer to you, using the words recited by all generations, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the table of Jesus, and Jesus welcomed all to the table. You are here in worship or joining us on live stream, and you are welcome at Holy Communion. In a moment, the ushers will bring you forward where you'll receive a piece of bread, all of which is gluten-free, and then you'll have a choice of either wine or grape juice. The wine is the dark-colored liquid in little cups, and then those cups can go into the baskets um, on the altar rails as you return to your seats. If you're joining us on live stream, we invite you to have bread or cracker and wine or juice and to receive them with these words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. If you, here in the sanctuary, if you would prefer for reasons of your own not to receive communion, you may come forward for a blessing instead and you, may, you can cross your arms over your chest and we'll know to give you a blessing. And now we sing the Lamb of God together.
Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you bless you now and forever. Amen.
through you. Praise Amen. Jesus.